Question yields back. The gentlewoman from the District of Columbia, Ms. Norton, is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Ms. Maloney, Chairwoman Maloney, for this important hearing uh, with fossil fuel companies. There's ample, ample evidence that the fossil fuel industry <coughs> has worked to deceive the public and so doubt about climate science, and that's been going on for decades. But the tactics they are employing are not new. They are a mirror image of tactics used by tobacco companies decades ago. In 2019, Sharon Eubanks, a former Justice Department prosecutor, testified before this committee's Civil Rights and Civil Liberties Subcommittee that Similar to big tobacco, oil companies have quoted, here I'm quoting, denied that there was a consensus. And at the same time, their internal documents show they knew there was a consensus. Mr. Woods, are you familiar with, the, with a scientist by the name of Frederick Seitz? Yes or no? No. All right, Dr. Seitz was a prominent scientist, even heading the National Academy of Science in the 1960s. According to the Union of Concerned Scientists in the 1990s and 2000s, Dr. Seitz advised a number of ExxonMobil funded groups on scientific research. At the same time, he published several articles questioning science, uh, climate science, including a 1995 Wall Street Journal piece arguing against a report issued by the UN's Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. In 1998, he, le he led a petition calling for the United States to leave the Kyoto Protocol. Dr. Seitz claimed in a letter with the petition that, and here again I'm quoting, increased atmospheric carbon dioxide is environmentally helpful. Dr. Uh, Mr. Woods, were you aware that before he began publicly <coughs> questioning climate science, Dr. Seitz had a role advising tobacco companies on their medical research. No, I'm not familiar with Dr. Seitz, so I'm, I'm not, I don't have any of that context. In the 1970s and 80s, Dr. Seitz advised the R.J. Reynolds Tobacco Company helping oversee millions of dollars in research funding. He later explained that the tobacco companies, quote, didn't want us looking at the health effects of climate change. Smoke, uh, cigarette smoking. Big oil tries to distinguish itself from big tobacco, but the fact is the disinformation campaign used for decades by the fossil fuel industry mirrors big tobacco itself in its playbook. I inject uncertainty into the public discourse, undermine the science, all while continuing to rake in economic benefits. Ultimately, the tobacco industry was held accountable for its deception, but big oil has so far escaped accountability for its longstanding climate denial. And I hope that tide will begin to turn today just as it did with big tobacco executives.